I'm Mel Stewart, and this is Swim Sign Podcast. Joining me today, Jason Lezak, General Managers, Cali Condors, barely squeaking out the win in match seven over the Toronto Titans. What happened, buddy? I expect you guys to crush everybody all the time. I think the fan favorites <laughs> are becoming Toronto Titans. What happened? I mean, we're coming off a loss, our first loss in, uh, you know, a year and a half here. So uh, I think it was a little bit humbling, but I mean, I, I honestly feel like we did a really good job uh, in the last match, especially on day two, given being down three swimmers. We really fought hard all the way to the end. And, you know, the swimmers knew coming into this, there was going to be a lot of fatigue, both physically and mentally. And uh, day one showed that a little bit. And we really just got, um, we got to them and, and just told them the importance of this win. Uh, we really wanted to go into the finals or into the playoffs, I should say, as one of the top two seeds. And we did that by securing that victory today. So we're pretty excited. Um, I just talked to Rob Kent and uh, uh, general manager, Toronto Titans. And basically he's like, you know, we do the math. No, we're doing the math and we know what's going to happen. We know where we're going to be. We're all within a few points. He knew the debacle heading into the skins. He knew that, that you guys look at you grinning around. Look at you grinning, man. Why are you grinning for? But well, it, it, no, no, essentially he's like, you know, he's, he's like, we got to show up and he's waiting for you to make a mistake. How does that feel to know that he's just waiting for you to make a mistake? I mean, the mistake was they two teams had the options of eliminating strokes and they left butterfly. I, I don't know if anybody was watching the last match when we dominated the skins in butterfly and they decided to let us have it again. So, um, you know, it's a tactical game. And, and I think uh, we strategized it well. But, you know, there, there's definitely the the pluses and the minuses. I mean, we, we were looking good. And then going into that men's 400 I am, you know, they take a, a big lead on us. Right. So there was a, there was that desperation i should say is uh we we got to step up and we got to win this and those those women did an amazing job at that rote rosetti is that right tenure breaking yeah. the 10 year old italian record in the 400 i am almost did it again tonight uh who knew that 400 i amers would, would would be so important in, in pro swimming and be honest with me buddy you could just say like i don't i i you don't like that or is it a cool thing you tell me well, I mean, in, in all honesty, you have to find a, a 400 IMR that is also good in other events, right? So it's really hard to bring someone in who can only swim a 400 free or only swim a 400 IM. But, but with the importance of the uh, extra points on, on those events this year, it's making a big difference. And um, I don't know if everybody realized it was going to be as big of a difference as it is. And also with the new rule of the, uh, the jackpots on the relays, they lowered those standards. So we're seeing a, some huge swings on the relays and, you know, it, it's a game and how you want to play it. And um, if you look at the medley, the mixed medley, for example, we were saving four swimmers for the skins. So we took a huge risk there of losing that event to dominate in the skins, which is what we did. So it paid off for us, but you know, it, you never really know how it's going to go. And um, it's still a learning curve with uh, these new rules and these new jackpot times and trying to figure out the skins based on not just winning the event, but actually only being able to pick from two versus picking from four, like we did last year. There are a lot of swim nerds out there who think they're smarter than everybody else. <laughs> smarter than Jason Lezak, certainly smarter than me. And, uh, you know, they have their own opinions about who the real challengers are. Who are the real challengers out there for the Condors? Who's going to interrupt the flight of the Condors this season? I mean, if you, if you look at this season so far, I mean, Toronto obviously has done a great job in improving their team. And, and I think they're going to be up there uh, contending. And L.A. Um, might not have been as strong at some of the matches this year, but they still got, you know, a big star, Ryan Murphy, in the wings waiting to come back, right? So – they're going to be a lot stronger in the playoffs and obviously, you know, energy standard in London. So pretty much, I mean, the top four teams from the first two seasons are going to be hanging around. And, and, and I think you throw London into the, or I'm sorry, uh, Toronto in the mix of that. And it's going to be a tight battle to see who's going to make the finals. And I mean, what's interesting in this league is, you know, the, the bottom teams aren't the same as they were last year right now either. So we're seeing a lot, a lot of shift and, you know, closer matches and more drama and, more excitement, and I'm hoping the fans are enjoying that. This is weird, but I'm going to say it anyway. I never thought that I'd be in a situation where I, where you know, I desperately wanted there to be a pro league. I wanted it to be brought. I wanted it to be big. I wanted it to be ISL. Now it's here. And what I find myself doing is I'm watching the reality television show of what Instagram accounts are. Because on Instagram accounts, you know exactly what athletes are doing. 
whether or not they're training, where they are, if they're on vacation. Did you ever think that a pro league would arrive and that you'd be tracking people on their, on their, on their full-time 24 hour show? Did you ever think that would happen? Yeah. I mean, there's people dancing with the stars right now, Mel. Can you believe this? Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a different world. Um, you know, I didn't even know what Instagram was, uh, when I was competing back in the day. Right. So, uh, basically this is something I dreamed of doing. I mean, if I had the opportunity, opportunity to do this as an athlete, I would have loved it. And it, I was all about the team concept of sports as, as I showed, um, all my best performances came on relays just because I love to be a part of the team. I grew up doing the team sports. So this was right up my alley. I stepped up on my college teams and my high school teams, you name it. So, um, for me, it wouldn't be any better than this if I was competing. But now that I'm not, I'm just happy to be a part of it in this aspect and trying to put together the best possible team I can. And with the, the draft this year and bringing new people in, I think what the Cali Condors did last year was we came together. And we might not have been favored to win from the beginning, but we kept winning. And there was something special about our team. And although we don't have the identical team and a lot of people couldn't come back, the new ones that came in, they stepped in there and – the veterans brought them in and they felt like they were part of the team in the first day. And I think that's what uh, makes our team really special. Man, if you had been, if you had been a pro in the pro league, you'd have been a pro forever. You would have, you would have been, you would have been, this thing was built for you, but now you're just a swimming executive, excuse me, not just a swimming executive, the general manager uh, of, of the team that won. What's it going to take to win this season? Well, I mean, we definitely have some improving to do. I mean, we had some people come in from day one and put up some amazing results. And then we had some come in from day one, not quite where they should be. So, you know, I got commitments from everybody. I was talking to all the athletes here and they're ready to either keep going on the path that they're on or, or turn things around. So I think if the current roster we have is, is amazing. I mean, you saw we won by 300 points on the first match. And um, we were just getting started, not to mention we have a couple people missing, right? So, um, you know, Caleb left early, which you all know, but we got Haley Fickner back home getting ready to come back. And she does all those events that nobody wants to do and scores a ton of points for us, right? And then don't forget about Eddie Wong, who's going to be there as well. And um, as you saw, uh, he dominated in that two fly last year, and he can even swim the four and free. And he's a young guy that can just keep doing new things, right? So I think having those three swimmers, that we don't have currently is going to make a world of a difference. And I think we'll be able to compete with anybody. Let's let people peek behind the curtain. You tell me how many people from swim swam sent you a text message asking you what's going on with Caleb <laughs> in the last few weeks. Cause I, I think well, I sent you 10. I don't have 10. enough hands for that, but uh, yeah, I mean, obviously um, you know what we said with Caleb was the truth. I mean, he, he wasn't feeling well and we had to, to make that choice. And I think we did the best thing. Um, we still won this match uh, without Caleb, which, uh, you know, was a little nervous, but we did it. And I think our team, as we keep talking about, we, we call it a team for a reason. And they all stepped up for each other. Um, they wanted to be in the right position. They knew that this team doesn't rely on only one person to win. Obviously having the MVP from last season is a tremendous help, but they knew that they could do it without them. And uh, we proved that. So it's just going to be even better when we have them for the playoffs. 